Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So in today's video, I'll be sharing with you the top five books that I ended up reading this fall. So the way this video is formatted is that I'll go through all the books that I read over the months of September, October, and November. And then at the end of the video, in no particular order, I'll go into more in depth about the top five books that I read. So without further ado, let's get started. Starting off with September, I first read The Lost Girls of Willowbrook by Ellen Marie Wiseman, which I gave a four out of five stars. Morgan by Mary E. Pearson, which I gave a 3 out of 5 stars, What She Found by Robert Tagoni, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars, and finally The Last Devil to Die by Richard Osman, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. Moving on into October, I first read Come As You Are, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars, Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars, The Bone Orchard by Sarah A. Mueller, which I gave a 3 and 3 quarters out of 5 stars, the Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana, which I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed, which I gave a 3 out of 5 stars. And The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Haro, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. And finally, moving into the month of November, I first read Wayward by Amelia Hart, which I gave a 3 out of 5 stars. Movie Land by Lee Goldberg, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. Devil's Way by Robert Brinzida, which I gave a 3 out of 5 stars. Stars. Fatal Witness, also by Robert Brinzida, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. And finally, I read If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. So the first book that is in my top five is The Last Devil to Die by Richard Osman. This book, this series, I just think is just really unique. So it follows four friends who live in a retirement community and they just find ways to insert themselves into either cold cases or ongoing murder investigations. So I feel like this series does something really unique. I feel like a lot of crime series take themselves like very seriously. They're very dark and intense. This one too does tackle very difficult subject matter but it in integrates a lot of like humor and warmth to it. I think that's what the Inspector Gamache series does really well and why it really stands out to me <laughs> in particular. And so this series is no different. I feel like in this one too, there was such a big kind of pivotal moment for one of the characters um, and kind of it took me by surprise too. And I got very emotional with kind of this, this change of events, um, but I thought the book handled it really well. I really love the murder investigations and just just kind of figuring it out with the characters and just the dynamic and banter I think is really well done. So the series is just really great. I think he said in his author note that he's taking a little bit of a break to kind of focus on some other work. So I think it'll be a, maybe a year or two before we get the next book in the series, but it gives you time to marathon it because honestly, I cannot recommend this series enough. So next, this is the book that I think is solely responsible for helping me get out of my summer long reading slump. And it is The Lost Girls of Willowbrook by Ellen Marie Wiseman. This book, was very intense. So it follows Sage, I want to say yeah, she had follows Sage who um, eight years ago was told that her twin sister had died from pneumonia. So she's kind of always thought like her twin sister had passed away many years ago. But when she uh, gets a call saying that her twin sister um, has escaped a mental institute, she wants to go and help kind of you know, find her sister. Um, but when she walks into this facility, they mistakenly um, think she is her twin sister and she kind of gets stuck in here and it kind of goes from there. This book was very hard hitting. I think in particular, especially because it is based on this real kind of Willowbrook State School, which is where people with, with like mental disabilities, learning disabilities were sent to. And just the treatment and living conditions that these people were forced to live in were terrible. And there were times like I, because I was so emotionally invested in the story and the treatment of how these people were actually treated in this real like state school was very heartbreaking and I had to read the book in small doses because of that um but nevertheless I still was really invested in this and then there's kind of like a big plot twist halfway through where it kind of turns into like a murder mystery thriller which was really fun so this book really got me out of that reading slump like it was difficult to read at times but when I had that such visceral response reading it that's how you know it's a really good book so this is the book that finally got me out of my summer long reading slump and 
It was just a really great book. I got this book for my sister for Christmas this year. Um, I think she will really like this as well, but I've never really read a book like this. It's like a historical fiction mixed with thriller slash murder mystery. So um, it took me by surprise, but it was definitely a standout from not only this like season, but also this year. Next up, I have The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Haro. This book was just really a lot of fun and you can tell it's quite thick, but I like marathoned the last like 300 pages in a day or so, like I couldn't put it down. So it follows three sisters who live in the mid 1800s in New Salem. And they had a falling out several years ago, but through a series of um, uh, mysterious magic, they are kind of thrust together. And what is unique about this is, about this group of sisters is that they are witches. And so not only are they, you know, dealing with witchcraft in like New Salem, where women are still being kind of prosecuted and accused of witch, um, witchcraft, um, this kind of coincides with the suffragette movement, which was really fun. And it kind of goes from there. I really love this. I thought this book was really well written. I also got this for my brother's girlfriend because she really loves like witches and like witchy vibes. And I think this does a really good kind of witch fantastical story integrated within this historical setting. And I just really loved kind of seeing these sisters kind of grow and evolve, especially at the beginning. They're very kind of strange. You can tell that they had a big falling out and just see them kind of work and build on the relationship and kind of the mystery surrounding this mysterious magical event that took place was really a joy and like really fun to read from and I was waiting I bought this at the beginning or at the end of 2022 and I held on to it because I wanted to read it around Halloween time and it was the perfect to do so I really loved the integration of the historical setting with like the suffragettes movement in addition to like kind of witchy vibes going on I thought it was really well done. I was really invested in it. And yeah, definitely, again, another highlight of the year for me. I will say like YA fantasy or just YA in general is very hit or miss with me. But when I was going through my dissertation and preparing and getting ready to defend my dissertation, I like marathoned through the Folk of the Air trilogy by Holly Black. That was like my escapism. So like I do really, when I mesh with some YA fantasy, like I really enjoy it. And this is one I've heard great things as well. And it's a standalone as well, which is really good. And it was Sorcery of Thrones by Margaret Rogerson. This follows a girl named Elizabeth who works at this kind of magical library where these tomes are sent there that hold all this dark magic. And when she, when kind of a book is stolen from the library, she is accused of the murder of the like headmistress and all these things so she's kind of sent to go to trial and it kind of takes off from there this book was a lot of fun i think if you really love kind of magical libraries uh kind of if you are basically in love with books i think this is the perfect book for you because it takes place in a magical library there is a romance in here but i wouldn't say it is the focal point of this series um so um there is that but i just had it was just like really atmospheric i love the book library vibes it gave me like nice wintry vibes too and it was just a joy to read even though there is like some like tropes that i have like issues with in ya where it was like very predictable who the villain was. I still really enjoyed it. I really love seeing the character development of the two main characters and then kind of slowly falling into falling in love with each other. I really enjoyed it and the ending was really a lot of fun. So this is a one I'm glad I didn't skip on because like I said, YA fantasy is hit or miss, but this one was definitely a hit with me. And last up, this is another book that I was holding out reading until kind of the fall to get kind of these fall vibes and it was If We Were Villain by Emma Rio. This is a book my boyfriend recommended and I really enjoyed it. It's basically like a kind of very similar to The Secret History by Donna Tartt but instead of them being kind of Greek and Latin students they are Shakespearean actors. So this book is very interesting in the sense that unlike The Secret History where you know basically from the first page who was murdered, this book is kind of told in a different format and so so we follow Oliver who is days from being released from prison and the police officer that put him there never was fully convinced that Oliver was the one that was the murderer in this case. So the police officer is retiring and so he asks Oliver upon his release to actually tell him the events um, that actually transpired, like tell him the truth because he 
feels like there is something that he was missing. And so this book kind of chronicles Oliver's perspective of kind of what were the events leading up to this murder and an eventual fallout and kind of from there. Um, I really enjoyed this. I think it was pretentious enough that you kind of get that like dark academia kind of trope kind of thrown in, but it was enjoyable enough that despite these characters being pretentious and slightly unlikable, you still were really invested in figuring out like who was murdered, why was Oliver the one that took the fall for this, and even though I was able to guess who was going to get murdered and who committed the murder, I still really enjoyed this. I think I maybe like this one a little bit more uh, than The Secret History just because it was a little bit the characters were slightly a little bit more likable and it was a lot shorter but then again this was another one that I marathoned I was like I just need to finish I need to know what happened and it really does a good job at bringing you along I will say like my one complaint was that like I never really enjoyed Shakespeare um, as a student and there's like a lot of like direct quotes or like exact like quotes of like plays and things or like they will talk to sh like quote Shakespeare to each other um so you can kind of see a lot of the italicized parts here and I basically would just like skip those parts like it was just like too much Shakespeare and as someone who doesn't really like Shakespeare it was a little too much but you know that's what I get for reading a book about Shakespearean actors in school um but this book was really great it deserves all of the hype and again similar to the Lost Girls of Willowbrook and the Ones and Future Witches like this is definitely a yearly favorite for me that's it guys thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video let me know in the comments below what books were your favorite that were standouts from this fall season and all that fun stuff so yeah thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time bye guys